Hello and welcome everybody. This is a third and final episode on subscription billing functionality inside Dynamics 365 Finance and Supply Chain. This episode will be covering multiple element revenue allocation. If you are interested in recurring contract billing or deferral on revenue and expenses, then please refer to other videos in this series. Multiple element revenue allocation can be described in the following steps. In the first, we will create a billing schedule. Then we will add at least two products to that billing schedule. Once that is done, we will assign multiple element allocation template to that schedule and then generate invoice from it. Then we will review the resulting transactions. Please keep in mind that this scenario can be covered with or without deferrals, and we will cover both during this demo. First, let's open subscription billing module and expand multiple element revenue allocation section, and let's review multiple element allocation templates. In here, I have a single template, and it has a deferred contract revenue account as 250605. In another section, we need to define a standalone selling price. This price will be used to decide what portion of the contract revenue should be allocated to each item. In this case, I have defined base sales price as the standalone selling price for the three of my products, installation, hardware, and software. The options are base sales price, which is pulled in either from the base sales price on the release product or the sales price defined under trade agreements, invoice price, which is a basic price that is specified on the billing schedule line, and a variety of other options here. When we select that option, unfortunately, the base sales price is not visible and shows as zero right here. So in order for us to know what the true base sales price is, we need to navigate to the release product and check it there. Let's take a look at the hardware. Hardware has a base sales price defined as $600. And now let's take a look at software. And the software product has that base sales price defined as $200. Now let's see that in action. The first thing I'll show you is the billing schedule that was posted without any MEA templates in place. So for that, I'll open all my billing schedules. Open billing schedule 15 here. And you can see right here, I have two lines, software and hardware. And the way I price them is that I assigned a zero sales price to the software product and a thousand dollars sales price to the hardware product. So if you were to use a standard functionality, you would expect all the revenue to be posted under the hardware item. Let's take a look at billing details. Here we have our invoice posted, and then we can take a look at the voucher. We see that in this line for the sales order revenue, all $1,000 were posted under account for 1100, which is called product sales. And if we check posting profiles for the hardware item, we see this is exactly where the revenue for the sale of that product should be going. And because the software item did not have any revenue generated, there was no ledger transaction for the account for 1200, which was the service revenue. Now we will do the exact same scenario, but with MEA template in place. Let's go back to the list of our schedules, create a new one. I will use the billing schedule group of one time my subscription customer, start date will be February 1st, number of periods defaults from the schedule group to zero, and the end will be at the end of the month. Then I will add a software item. I'll change the pricing method from standard, which is my base sales price of 200, as you may remember, to flat, and override it to zero. And then I'll add hardware item, override pricing method to flat again, and change it to $1,000. So basically exactly the same as the schedule that we looked at previously. You may notice here, I have no deferral set up for these products, so the revenue will be posted directly into the sales revenue accounts. So if we do not use any template, we would expect $1,000 to be posted to the same 401100 account, which is the one that is defined for the hardware item. But now we will apply a template. In order for us to do so, we will click on Revenue Allocation button here on the top. And now we will select a single option, which would allow us to define or select MEA template. 
you can see right now that my standalone selling price and my contract standalone selling prices are zero. But as soon as I select my template, you will see now that my standalone price of 200 and 600 are populated. My total contract price here is $1,000. Remember, it all came in from that hardware item. But the revenue now is being allocated across two products that I have on my billing schedule. And you can see that for my hardware item, I'm allocating three quarters of that revenue, $750. And for my software item, I'm allocating a one quarter of that $1,000 revenue, which equals to $250. The reason being here is that all the revenue is split based on the standalone selling price. So 600 compares to 200 as three to one, and therefore the three parts of that $1,000 contract revenue will be allocated to that product, and one quarter will be allocated to this software product. If the standalone selling prices were equal, let's say 500 and 500 dollars, or let's say 200 and 200 dollars, then the revenue would be allocated equally, $500 for each product. You may notice that I also have a multiple option here. I'll explain you what the difference is. If we select a single one, the deferred contract revenue account, which will not be applicable in this scenario because we're not gonna defer any revenue or any expense in this scenario, is gonna be same for both lines. And you can see with that single option, I cannot change and select a different deferred revenue account for those lines. But if you select a multiple option, on the surface, nothing changes, but now I can click on one of those and I can actually select a different deferred revenue account for my different billing schedule lines. In my case, I'll keep them the same, even though they're not really relevant. Now let's close this form and proceed with the standard step of generating invoice. Click on generate invoice, view billing schedules. Here I see my two lines. If you can see here, the invoice would look like this. Basically, my customer will get an invoice that says $0 for software and $1,000 for hardware. This is the way I would like to present it to my customer. Click on Generate. And now, that's where we expect to see a difference. Let's take a look at billing details. Here we have this sales order generated automatically as well as invoice posted automatically. Let's click on that and let's take a look at the voucher. In here, we see this line right here and this line right here. Both are for the sales order revenue and we see the amounts 250 and 750. And we see that the 250 was actually posting to 401 200 account, which is called service revenue. And if we go back to our inventory postings, we see that this account was actually defined for the software item. So we know that this $250 was recognized under the software product. And then for this line right here, it was posted to 401-100 account, which is named product sales in the amount of $750. And that's the account that is defined for my hardware item right here. So that's a MEA template in action. In the next scenario, I'll just add more complexity to it by deferring that revenue first. The easiest way to do that is go and navigate to my revenue and expense deferrals, items deferred by default, and I'll add my hardware item as deferred by default on the sales order as well as my software item. Now let's go and create a new billing schedule. My one-time billing group, my subscription customer, start date February 1st and end date February 28th. So same items, same prices, software, flat price of $0, hardware, flat price of $1,000. You may notice that deferred checkbox was checked. That is because these two products are deferred by default. If we click on the deferrals button right here, we see all the deferral schedule settings, which would include the deferred revenue and deferred expense accounts, and also any deferral schedules that may be applied to that item. Now we're gonna click on revenue allocation, select single and apply our MEA template. As soon as we do that, we see that the amounts that will be recognized is 250 and 750, same as before. With that in place, I will close that form and generate my invoices. Now let's select the hardware. This hardware item is a stocked product right here. 
Let's click on View Billing Details. And first, let's take a look at the invoice voucher. We will see that all revenue in the amount of $1,000 went into that deferred revenue account of 250600 That account was defined under my deferral defaults of my subscription billing module right here, revenue and expense deferrals, and then my deferral defaults. In here, we'll see that all the revenue is deferred for all the items for all the customers to that account 250600 that is why it was all posted here for both software and hardware items. Now let's go back to our billing details and click on deferral. Because the hardware item was set up as a stocked item, we have two deferral schedules, one for the revenue, 6.9, and one for the consumption, 7.0. Now if we go back to our software product and click on billing details, go to the deferral, because this product was set up as the non-stock product, we only have deferral schedule for the revenue side. There is no consumption because this, uh, this non-stock product does not have any cost associated with it. Now let's process those deferral schedules. So go to periodic tasks, recognition processing, select end of the month, click on preview. Here we see those three deferral schedules that we have discussed two for the revenue and one for the expense or consumption. Let's click on process. Now let's go back to our billing schedule and let's take a look at the audit trail. Select the hardware item first, billing details, deferrals, select that revenue deferral schedule and click on audit trail. Here we see two records. One was for the schedule creation, which was basically our invoice voucher right here, where you looked at that, all revenue was posted to that deferred revenue account of 250600 And the second line was for our revenue recognition, was posted via that general journal. Let's click on that. And we will see here that my $750 revenue was recognized into the account of 401100. And again, that account was defined under my inventory postings for my hardware item right here. And my $250 revenue was recognized under account 401200, which is service revenue, which was defined for my software item right here. And the last thing that I wanted to show you is a thing that I was not able to make work right here. So if you remember, if we have this MAA template open, I define a deferred contract revenue account. And if you remember that number 250605. And then when I was creating my deferral schedule, when I applied that template, I saw that this account was correctly populated here. So 250605. So my expectation was that when I post my invoice, the deferred revenue account will be used and will be pulled from here and it will be 605. But if you remember, let me just open the billing details again and let's take a look at the invoice voucher. It still used a different account, 250600, which was a different account from the one I specified on my MEA template. And this account right here, again, as I mentioned, came in from my deferral defaults. So I was trying different ways of trying to make system to post to that deferred revenue account defined on my MAA template right here, but I was not able, and that is where guys are kind of probably looking up to you. If you have any ideas or have any experience of making it work, maybe I have missed some setups, I would be curious to hear your experience. With that being said, guys, I appreciate your attention. Thank you very much. I hope you find that video useful. Until the next time.